Welcome to this week's Chinuch Hashkofa message, it's Parshas Toldos. In this week's Parsha, of course, we have the famous story of Yaakov taking the brachas. And here's a nice word you can share with your children, but also has a very good educational lesson as well. So we know that when Yaakov showed up to take the brachas from Yitzchak, Yitzchak heard him, couldn't see, patted him, and then said, Hakol kol Yaakov mi de Esau, the famous words. The voice is the voice of Yaakov, but the, the hands are the hands of Esau. There's a medrash that says the following on this Pasuk. The medrash says, Bizman, at the time when we hear the voice of Yaakov in the shul in the base medrash, then the, day, the, then the hands of Esau will not be able to to have any effect and control over the Jewish people. And this is a medrash explaining this Pasuk. So the Mepharshim ask, but that's not what the Pasuk says. The Pasuk says, Hakol kol Yaakov, the voice is the voice of Yaakov, and the hands are the hands of Esau. It doesn't say, the voice is the voice of Yaakov, and the hands are not the hands of Esau, which would then lead into what the medrash says, that when we have the kol, the voice of Yaakov, the hands of Esau do not dominate. So how does the Medrash learn this from the Pasuk? So one of the ideas I saw, and this comes from the Avne Azal, is that really we need, to read, we need to read this as a question. Yitzchak was asking a question, Hakol kol Yaakov The voice is the voice of Yaakov, and you also have the hands of Esau. In other words, how could they really go together? from which the Medrash learns that they actually don't really go together, and that's what Yaakov was trying to say. Yaakov was trying to say that I don't understand how this could be together, because we know they don't really go together. From which the Medrash says, that's why we learn that when the kol kol Yaakov is very strong, the hands of Esau, the hands of violence, do, do not dominate. So I, was, I, I thought that a, a follow-up from this idea is the following. Because of course, we can look at Esau and Yaakov a bit differently. Yaakov, we, we, we both have these worlds. Of course, we have the world of Yaakov, which is, which is the world of learning and davening and kedusha. But we also do have, in ourselves, in a different way, the world of Esau. We need to work, we need, we need to do physical things, we need to eat, we need to sleep, we need to do business. So, taking that idea, and going back to what Yitzchak said in his question, the question that Yitzchak really had was, these things can't be equal. These things can't go together. Because what we need to know, and this is a good discussion to have with our children, because our children see these both worlds. We need to be mechanech, we need to educate our children with the hashkafa, that everything comes from Hashem, not only that everything comes from Hashem, but all the brachas that Hashem gives us really come as a result and come through the activities of Kedusha that we engage in. Because since Hashem is the source of all bracha, therefore, the bracha we get from Hashem comes mainly when we increase our connection to Hashem, which is through davening and through learning. And therefore, the davening and learning should be the center of our lives. Now, of course, we need to also engage in, not, not in a violent way, but in the broad sense of Yudai Midei, so we have to work we have to do business, we have to arrange food, and so on and so forth. But we always know that it has to be secondary. It can never be equal to Kol Kol Yaakov. It has to be secondary. Like the Lubavitch Rebbe once explained in a word that it says in the Pasuk, Yigia Kapecha Kisoycha. A person, uh, it says, if a person eats from the toil of their hands, they will be fortunate, they'll be happy. And he says, what does it mean, the, the, the toil of your hands? That the, the, the business that we do, the work that we do, has to be only with our hands. It's something we do, it's a functional thing that we do, but our head, meaning our focus, our passion, needs to be in the world of Kedusha. Yegiya kapecha kisoichel. It's only eating because Hashem wants us that the bracha should also go through the natural means. He wants it to go through um, uh, working and, 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 and plowing and sowing and doing business and so on and so forth, but that, also, that has to be not where our passion lies, not where our head lies. And that's an important discussion to have because it comes with the emunah that the bracha comes only from Hashem. 
It goes through the working, it goes through the business, it goes through the things that we do, but it comes only from Hashem and therefore only stronger when we put our focus and our attention to inyanim of ruchnis and spiritual activities. As parents, we have to reflect if we are actually examples of this. Like, do we go to a shir, even though we're very busy at work? Or do we cut out a shir or, or minimize the shir because we think we can do another deal or we can arrange something else physical and mundane? Are we committed to davening with a minion, even if it means we have to rush in the morning afterwards to go to work? But knowing that davening with a minion will, will bring more bracha, not less bracha. And so on and so forth. So we have to have that reflection. What is, the, what is the passion? Also, what do children see? What we are excited about? Are we excited about the physical things that we do? Or are we excited about the ruchnistic things that we do? Are we excited about what happened in the office? Or are we excited about the shir that we heard last week with an amazing voice? So it's not just about the discussion, of course, we have with our children. But it's also about the example we show, both practically and also emotionally, sort of where our passion and excitement actually lie. Have a wonderful day and a good job.